actually, if anyone's in the thrash or punk, I'm in a band called, well, you said MOE. Yeah. Class. Yeah. We just released our first single. Our drummer is from DRI, the original drummer from DRI, W. Rotten Imbeciles, Felix Griffin. And then uh, the original uh, rhythm section from USA for MOD, uh, Tim McMurtry and Kenny Ballone. Our, our first album with Combat Records is coming out. I, I can't give a release date yet, but it's just about worked up and uh, finished the mixing part of it. So we're going to work on the marketing part soon. So what was the other label that you're working with on that one? Combat Records. Combat Records. Yep. Now, how did you come about with working with Combat? So Tom Hazard, who runs Combat Records with Dave Ellison, uh, Tom Hazard used to manage my old band, Primer 55. Mm -hmm. If anyone remembers, like, the new metal from the 2000s, Primer 55 was on Island Def Jam Records. Um, so he managed us after when, when I joined the band. Now, people say, oh, you were in Primer 55 in 2000. No, that was Jason. He was the original singer. He was the most badass singer on the planet. He passed away a few years ago. A lot of people think I had like beef with him. I, me and Jason talked all the time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, we both we both uh, battled drug addictions. So we, we had something in common. We talked about it all the time. So Primer 55 is Jason, but I was in Primer 55. So when people are like, why do you bring that up? Like I, it was five years of my life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I never tried to replace Jason, but there's some weird beef with that with people like the fans. Like I... I loved Primer 55 as a fan, and then I was in the band for a while, so it, it's still a part of me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I always will be, but Jason is Primer 55. Anyways, I went off on a tangent. What no, were we no, talking no. about? Yeah. Um, we were talking about Combat Records. Combat Records. Uh, so Tom Hazard used to manage Primer 55 when I was in the band, and then he uh, teamed up with Dave Ellison from Megadeth to start Combat Records. And so we all know the kind of the same people. He's He put together a deal for us, so we're working on this first record with with them. So... I work closely with Tom. Uh, Dave Ellis and I do a lot of stuff for it too. It's, it's it's a trip because Megadeth is one of my favorite bands. And I have Dave Ellis and email me like, hey, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, shit, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw Megadeth a bunch of years ago, actually at the rave. Um, this lineup was fucking sick. It was Volbeat opened. Yeah. No, um, they opened. They opened. Yeah. Um, not Mudvayne. Um, Motorhead, sorry. Motorhead, who played so ungodly, like, it's no joke. It's the loudest concert I've ever heard in my life. My ears are ringing now thinking about those shows. So it was me, my friend PJ from Wausau, and he brought two two of his staffers down with him. And the girls thought it was so loud that they were tearing money in mm -hmm. half, rolling it up, <laughs> and putting it in their ears. Yeah, Like I was screaming as loud as I could to order a beer. And they're like, what? The two loudest shows... Well, actually, the three most loud shows is always Motorhead, Motorhead Slayer. <laughs> Motorhead's one and two on every list. I swear to God, it's and they're a three. They were a three piece. It yeah. was so ungodly, but I loved it. Oh, dude. I don't know if I could do it. If I was like seventy, I don't know if I'd go to a Motorhead show. But yeah, uh, let me rest in peace, brother. Yeah, and then Megadeth was the headliner on that one, and it was I felt bad because it was one of those that after Motorhead played, Megadeth seemed so quiet, quiet? Yeah. and I was just like. Something feels That's off. a great fucking show, though. I mean, yeah, it was amazing. It was yeah. the first time I actually got to see Megadeth, too. Yeah. But yeah, Volbeat, uh, Motor, Motorhead, and Megadeth. Was I have a funny Lemmy story. Go for it. All right. All right. I got a million stories, so if I go off on a tangent, mm. I'm sorry. Tell all the stories you so, want. Time out. Before we go even further, um, we're going to go in stories with Lemmy. Number one, I want to give a shout out to this because I think this is just fucking amazing, is that if you can, Randy, are you getting, a, getting this well? Force 5 Records has their own rolling papers. Ruckus wraps. The ruckus wraps. <laughs> you should do you should do those for uh for condoms too, the ruckus wraps. <laughs> when you're down to make the ruckus. Anyone that listens to Force 5 will look at that condom and go, nope. <laughs> <laughs> those are just sit in the warehouse. <laughs> uh all right, hold on. Uh, one other thing I totally forgot about that I wanted to plug as well. Um next week, Saturday, uh Jake Paul, Ben Askren fight. Um, I'm not going to be able to host, host this, but the hosting site will be Uncle Bucks over on Old World 3rd Street. There will be some specials that we're putting together. I'm talking with uh, Ricardo from Uncle Bucks tomorrow. So uh, if you're looking to see the Jake Paul, Ben Askren fight next Saturday, you want to go to Uncle Bucks. The top two floors are going to be dedicated just to the fights. There's about 80 seats available. So come early. Uh, ben Askren is... From Wisconsin, he's an Olympic wrestler who's going to be boxing Jake Paul. 
who is utterly fucking annoying. I was going to say, it's the Ben Askren, Jake Paul fight. Don't put Jake Paul first. Fuck that. Time out. <laughs> We're going to get to your story in a second. <laughs> But Ben said one of the funniest fucking lines, and I think it went over everyone's fucking head during that press conference. Well, he was what, punking Jake Paul pretty good. Like, dude, he we, said flat out, he goes, "Jake, if this was a real fight, he goes, I'd fucking kill you." Yeah. He's like, he's like, you wouldn't have a fucking chance. He goes, yeah. I would ragdoll you in the back alley. Yeah. He's like, I would pick you up, beat the shit out of you. He goes, we're going with my weakest aspect, and he goes, and I'm still gonna kick your ass. <laughs> He goes, understand, he goes, I'm boxing right now, but in a real fight, he goes, I'd fucking kill you. Yeah. He's like, so shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, but and I'll tell you this, Jake Paul knows how to like uh, get in there and get under people and market himself. And, and that's the thing. Get your money. Get yeah, your money. Yeah. And yeah, say, what, same thing we were saying about the Chris yep. Brown thing. Yep. Get your fucking money, dude. I can't hate him there. And, and, and that's the thing is that, you know, as much as people don't like him, he's making money off the fact that people don't like him. People aren't paying to see him box yeah people are are paying to please see him punch that motherfucker out but he's so fucking annoying please beat his ass yeah and, and if you're making money off of that and you can take that and you're cool with it yeah do good for you yeah if you can be that hated and 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 make money off of it great he Chris will all- brown versus jake paul Ooh, you know who would you uh, root for god that there's got to be a villain in that you know, here's the thing. You ever, if Jake Paul, if you're watching, Danny Diablo comes in and smashes them both, <laughs> brings out a table in the Hardy <laughs> yeah. Boys and just beats the shit out of everyone, and then becomes a win for Danny Diablo, yeah. and then he takes everyone's purse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, you know, in a in a Chris Brown, Jake Paul fight, I think Chris Brown is so hated, yeah, <laughs> that Jake Paul actually comes out the hero on that one. Yeah, that's crazy, right? You know, well, I mean, Chris Brown jumped up. And so for the record here, we are talking about Chris Brown from the band Trapped, not the R&B singer. Which who can do he's, he's had his moments, too, of uh, that came up recently. Did it? Where someone was just like. Sorry, we go off on a tangent. I didn't even smoke weed. <laughs> I feel like we're running on tangents. No, dude, I'm ADD as fuck. So I, we'll, I, we'll start here too. and we'll end over there. It, we're not. A, well, we're good for conversation, yeah. but it's going to go everywhere. Everyone's like, will you guys stay on one fucking topic? <laughs> yeah, task at hand. <laughs> No, as far as the, I brought this up the other day where I was like, I didn't play Chris Brown for like a good six years because I was like, I took Rihanna's side on that now, one. I was going to say, he's not talking about Trapped at the DJ booth. He's yeah. talking about Chris Brown, the R&B singer. Yeah. yeah. I didn't play like up until I think that happened. And then he did a track with Bane Benazi. I think there was like four or five years that went by. And I finally like, I we think did it was that track with Lil Dicky. That's a pretty dope track. That was a dope track, dude. <laughs> yeah. the, I mean, I will say this, man. The dude makes some hits, dude. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm like, dude, I'm like, stay out of the fucking news. Like, stop kidnapping people. Yeah. Stop fucking smacking girls up. Please. I I got used to playing your records again. Stop. <laughs> yeah, stop. Yeah. Stop fucking up. Don't be like R. Kelly, dude. Yeah. Fucking nasty ass. <laughs> mm. So we're going to circle back. Yeah. Uh, Lemmy, Motorhead. Lemmy, Motorhead. All right. So uh, when I first moved to L.A., um, I used to go to the, the Rainbow Room all the time. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with the Rainbow Room? Bar and Grill, yeah. yeah. Off of Sunset, right? Yes. One of the most iconic, like, 80s. Every, anyone, I'll, I'll give you a hint. If if you go to L.A. and you want to go to the Rainbow Room to, like, see people or on Sunset, don't go on a weekend. They, that's the tourist time. The locals come out on Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays. It's nothing but, it's crazy. I ran into Andy Dick there. I ran into Cypress Hill there. I ran into uh, Corey Taylor there. I ran into Serge Tankian. Um, fucking in sync was there. Like I, I ran at people all, I would go Sunday through Tuesday and I just networked with people. But Lemmy was always, when he wasn't on tour, he was always there. He was playing in the back, uh, his machines. He loved mm-hmm. playing his machines. He would just have a beer. And me being from Milwaukee, when I went there, I'm like, where's the beer? Let's drink. Woo. Just fucking. And everyone else is like doing a bunch of designer drugs and shit. So <laughs> <laughs> Lemmy would get a kick out of me and he'd laugh. Cause I would always be yelling ruckus and all this stupid shit. And I remember one time, <laughs> I was I was pretty fucked up, and uh, I was like, ah, bartender, I need a Heineken, and she's like, you're cut off, and I said, what? I'm cut off? I was like, why? <laughs> she's like, you're running around yelling. She's like, I can't have that. And then Lemmy's Lemmy's like, whatever her name is, like Heather or whatever. He's like, come here, and I see him talking to her, and I'm sitting on the other side of the bar, and she's like, ah. she comes walking over with a Heineken. She's like, Lemmy bought you one. <laughs> I was like, yes, Lemmy just bought me a drink. And I went over to Lemmy, and I, I, I was like, Lemmy, thank you so much. He's like, cheers, mate. You know how to party. 
I will remember that story to the day I die. She, the bartender was so pissed that she couldn't cut me off. <laughs> Just, uh, mm-hmm. she, she was dejected. She was like, she was like this. Let me bought you this. 